Hello and welcome to Gabbit Media. I'm Grant Abbott and today we're going to be painting our rock. And there's no artistic skill needed for this one. It's the same technique as the painting with stencils, but this time we'll be baking out using our ambient occlusion node. So this is where we got to last time and I used just a rough noise texture as my color. I'm now going to delete that and we've got this strange sort of purple looking color at the moment. And I want to create a new texture that we're going to paint onto. So create a new texture and we'll call it rock cull two. These I've got two of them for my practice and press OK. We now need to bring that color into here because if I go to the texture painting tab at the moment, ready for texture painting, it's got my normals and my cavity. If I just bring out another window, so pull this down and go to the shader editor, you can see there's two textures there, normals and cavity, and there's two textures here on the side. I'll just press M to get rid of this panel. So what we need is the texture in here to be able to paint onto, and ideally it's best to hook it up. So I'll just duplicate one of these, shift D, and change it to my rock cull two. And you can see as soon as I change it, it's now changed in the viewport. Do make sure you're in look dev mode, but it hasn't updated here. We're still on the rock norms. If I hook it up, however, and I can hook it into this top piece here, and you can see it turning black. So that's the black color, but you can still see the normals, which is quite useful. And when we start painting, we'll be able to see that cavity mask as well. But at the moment it's fully black and it's hiding that cavity mask. Now you'll notice it hasn't appeared. And I think that's just the glitch actually. So if we go to layout mode and back to texture paint, it appears and it's now highlighted at the bottom here. Let's just quickly check that we can paint and we can. And can you see that the cavity mask is now coming through? And that's the multiplied cavity mask there. If I change this down to zero and back to one, you can see the influence of this multiply cavity mask or ambient occlusion as some people might call it. So let's start painting a texture onto here. I'll squeeze these over a bit zoom out just a touch and I'll pull this out slightly and once again pull across another window so I can get to my textures. I'll scroll down to my textures here, not the texture masks but the texture remember, create a new and that creates a new texture over here in the texture panel. Now what you'll need to do is find a rock texture. Textures.com is a great place. I'll open one up for myself. I've downloaded a few so I'll find one of those. The one I used last time was actually this concrete material here. I could go for this very interesting jagged rock texture here. Let's see what that's looking like. So this is quite interesting. One, you can see that it tiles when I move off to the side and that's because we've got it turned on to tiled. So can you see that line going across there? So let's change this to random for one. And two, because it's so jaggedy, it sort of rubs out my cavity because it's got these black bits in. It does a reasonable job, but I'm not sure I particularly like that texture. So let's create a new texture. I might try this one this time. That's a bit more subtle. I think I prefer it. What some people prefer doing is the stenciled approach. But with the rocks, I find you can just use a random. I'm always pretty rough to start off with with these things. Just watch out for stretching like this going across your mesh. And then I start adding detail in later. And already that's looking pretty good. Just tidy up any stretching. And you can see there's a slight glitch here. And that's because there was loads of stretching in my original rock. And that's why it's much better to use a smart UV project. So make sure you save your texture. Image save as, rock color two. And there we've got a great looking rock. So lastly then, let's go back to the shading tab and we can see our rock looking pretty nice there. What you will want to do is bake out both the color which is from this one. So you'll want to press Control Shift and bake out that emission, which is the color here. And you'll want to bake out your roughness, which is Control Shift, left click, the roughness node as well. Some game engines actually have an ambient occlusion slot, so you can use this map as well. But for most other things, you'll want the color, the roughness, and we've already got the normal map there. Okay, so that concludes the rock part of this course. In the next episode, I'll talk about putting lots of objects onto one texture map and do comment below with any details that you'd like to know about. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.